Okay, let's jump in. Wow. Wow that uh, Milei won. I remember being in Argentina. So I, I, he won the, the, the election for the presidency of Argentina. Uh, it wasn't even close. He won by 10 percentage points, um, and uh, which, is, which is 12, actually, I think, 56 to 44, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, I, I was in Argentina, I remember last, I think it was last year, earlier this year, last year, maybe it was last fall, I can't remember. Anyway, I was there and, and we met with a bunch of people who know Millet and, and, and are kind of fans and, and we have been working for him and with him and are kind of the, the objectivists and libertarians uh, of, uh, of Buenos Aires, uh, where we, ha we, we actually have a, an objectivist conference in Buenos Aires, um, and we will again in April. Uh, so I think it was earlier this year. Anyway, it, it, there was some talk about, yeah, Millet is, is going to, he's running and, he, you know, probably doesn't have a chance, but it'll be interesting to watch. And, and uh, uh, you know, he's, he's a character. So I got, got to know a little bit about him uh, from people who know him. Uh, he's obviously a character. He's, a, he's quite a clown, but he's also an economics professor and, and has, a, I think, a deep grounding in Austrian economics. He, he has read... I, I think most of Ayn Rand and has a, a you know, a, a somewhat understanding of Ayn Rand's philosophy. He's also a Christian or somewhat religious, not clear uh, how Christian or, but he is religious. He's definitely religious. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, he's, he, he, he swears, uh, I mean, profusely uh, and, uh, and he yells and he screams and he jumps up and down and he's incredibly passionate. And, he, and I think shockingly, although it's not a shock now after the, the elections leading up to this, but it's still shocking. He won, and he won by a big margin. And this is a guy who ran on a campaign saying to abolish the Argentinian central bank and replace basically Argentina peso with a dollar. Great idea. And, and he, you know, he's uh, is also very, very pro Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies generally. So... Um, you can imagine the dollar will be the official currency, but there will be he will encourage uh, currency competition. Uh, it, you know, he ran on a campaign of abolishing most of the government uh, ministries in the Argentinian government. So, you know, there, there's a video of him with a list of all the governments, and he's this is what I'm going to do. This ministry, you know, he's very theatrical. Anyway, um, he, he wants to abolish him. He wants to. Uh, fire, I think, two-thirds of, of, of uh, people who work for the government, uh, privatization on mass scale. I assume this is, uh, you know, he's talked about uh, massive and immediate reductions in regulations and, and, and in taxes. Uh, Argentina has crazy taxes and crazy regulations and that distort everything. Uh, and um, it's going to be super interesting. I don't know exactly how it all works out. I, I don't know exactly what he will do and what he is able to do, given the particular um, uh, the particular system of government uh, Argentina has and, and the culture and, uh, and, and uh, the bureaucracy and what uh, let him get away with and so on. But... And, and sadly, I don't think this election is a sign that uh, the population in Argentina is uh, dedicated to free markets. I think his election is the ultimate expression of we've had it. We've had it with you fascists. We've had it with you socialists. We've had it with you, you know, Peronists who are kind of fascist socialists. We've had it with all of you, with, with, with the, the, the last hundred some years of, of politics in Argentina. We are done. It is, you know, we're upset and, and we won't have it. And uh, while I think what was expected of this election was that the conservative, kind of the right wing, uh, mildly right of center candidate would win. Um, they've had it so much. And there's so many that they're willing to go really radical. And, uh, you know, at least a, a third of the population is willing to go really radical. And then uh, enough of the people who voted for the right, center right, are saying the one thing we don't want is the same old Peronista party that we've had for uh, decades, 
the one thing we're willing to take a gamble on this guy who we don't completely agree with, uh, just to avoid another term of this looting, uh, uh, disastrous uh, uh, candidate. The fact that the guy who was running, who was the economy minister in the current government, uh, it got 44% is shocking because he has an economy that has been devastated by this government, has been crushed by this government, and, and, and riddled with corruption, but more importantly, with, with um, uh, what do you call it, uh, inflation at 140%. And just, just, I mean, the Argentine economy has been decimated for decades, but over the last few years, it's fallen off a cliff in a way that I don't think uh, anybody expected. And, to, and to, for anybody to vote for the existing economy minister is suicidal and crazy. Uh, this election should have been between Millet and the, and the, kind of the, the, the white conservative between two opposition characters, not between the establishment guy. Anyway, so now the question is, what can Millet do? He doesn't, his party doesn't have a majority in the parliament. They, 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 you know, so how does he pass laws? How does he, uh, how does he dismantle the central bank? Uh, dismantling a central bank in a country the size of Argentina is not simple. I mean, it is essential, which is simple. You can just do it. And uh, I'm not against that, but, but it, it, it's unlikely that that's how it, it's done. Um, it, it's not simple. That while these things have happened in places like uh, Panama is on the dollar, uh, Ecuador is on the dollar. It's never happened on an economy the size, anywhere close to the size of Argentina. Uh, it, it, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the plan. I'm looking forward to seeing it put in place because... It'll be super exciting, and it's a super step forward, and it's a super increase in the amount of freedom Argentinians will have. Uh, they will actually be able to earn income in 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 a currency that doesn't lose its value, a hundred percent of its value, or well over a hundred percent of its value every year. Um, I see Daniel. Daniel uh, is just given, you know, he's he's contributed on a super chat five thousand Argentinian pesos. Now it, there was a time where five thousand Argentinian pesos would have made my day and, and would have got us to our goal. And wow, I mean, it was a lot of money. But today, with inflation and the devaluation of the Argentinian pesos, and this is probably the official rate, the unofficial rate, it's, a, it's half of this, is 14 bucks. So 5,000 Argentinian pesos is 14 bucks. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's actually in the, in, in the real market, it's seven bucks. So um, that gives you a little flavor of, of, of kind of how decrepit the whole thing is. Thank you, Daniel. That, that was Daniel's first uh, super chat. So really, really appreciate that. Um, anyway, I think it's super exciting. It's it's more than exciting because it's, it's, it's really interesting because it's going to be interesting. What can a free market president, president he's going to be president as of December 10th, do when... The country is not really free market, even though it elected him and he has a mandate, you have to say winning by 12 points. What can he actually get away with? What can he do? What will be the backlash from the people who elected him? How much room will they give him to do what he needs to do? Uh, it, all fascinating questions. And in that sense, Argentina's kind of the canary in the coal mine. To what extent can you change dramatically, not like, not even like Reagan and Thatcher, much more. To what extent can you change, dramatically change an economy of a culture, uh, in a culture where the people are not, we don't know how com uh, aligned the people are with you. And certainly the political class is completely misaligned. And there's no tradition of uh, you know, solid kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a change of power, democratic change of power, where who knows what the bureaucrats and the military and who else, what they will do if, if, if this is pushed too much. But again, he won by 56 to 44. So you got to believe that he will have a significant mandate. My advice to him, and by the way, if anybody knows Millet and, and uh, he needs some um, advisors, uh, he needs, a, I don't know, a, a, a secretary of the economy, or I'm, I'm sure he's got people in mind. But if he needs anybody kind of to uh, bounce ideas off, 
I am available. I, I, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, I, I, I would want to find a way to support him and to see if you can put together a kind of a rational program, how quickly you can uh, liberate an economy. To me, all of these are fascinating questions and questions that it would be cool to be involved in, uh, in doing. I, I doubt I'm going to get that phone call. But anyway, if anybody out there knows Millet and you can tell him, uh, my guess is he probably knows who I am or he knows people, a lot of the people around him certainly know who I am. Uh, I am available uh, uh, as a consulting advice, uh, anything like that. Uh, and I will be in Argentina in April for a, a big objectives conference there. Um, now, it, it, this is not not to suggest. I mean, the only reason I am I'm, I'm supporting Millet is not because uh, it's not because he's an ANCAP. It's in spite of the fact that he claims to be an ANCAP, and that's because his program is not a program to institute anarcho-capitalism. It, he's not. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he strikes me that he's not a nihilist like uh, so many in the Libertarian Party. He's not a nihilist like so many, not all, but so many uh, ANCAPs in the United States. He is, I don't know if you saw him three days ago at a big demonstration, waving the Israeli flag. He's is a massive fan of, uh, of Israel. He's even a fan of the United States, uh, where ANCAPs in the United States are not fans of the United States or of Israel. So uh, I'll give him that. He's even in a weird way a fan of Ben Bernanke at the Federal Reserve. But, uh, you know, I'll forgive him that. Um, yeah, I mean, he, 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 there are better people out there, and he might call himself an ANCAP. Um, and he is religious and he's anti-abortion, although he, does, he wants there to be a referendum on abortion, at least not instituted from above uh, the banning of abortion. So um, um, anyway... Let's see what happens. Um, maybe my last trip to Argentina is what made this possible. That's delusional, I know, but what the hell. Um, maybe this next trip will, 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 will make it even, uh, you know, will, will help put together a completely rational uh, program for him. Who knows? Maybe one of my people in Argentina can arrange a meeting with me, me, me and Millet when I'm out there in... Um, in um, what do you call it, in uh, April. Anyway, I am super excited. Again, not I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I'm super excited to watch the process and to see what happens. One way or the other, we will learn a lot about this. And then the, 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 the question is, can somebody like Millet with his attitude and his a little bit crazy persona, can he get stuff done? We don't know that yet. We, we, we have no evidence that he is a doer uh, other than political doer podcast doer uh, but is he a doer can he actually go out there and produce does he have and or does he have the people around him uh, who may be businessmen people who've actually achieved things and will the businessmen around him be radical will they will they try to, to try to undercut his radicalism and try to force him to compromise i mean so many questions so many questions, and at this point, so few answers. And as time passes now, we will get more and more of those answers. So again, I'm excited because I'm a curious guy, and I want to see how this plays out. I'm excited to watch it. Um, one other aspect of this, part of the fun of this, is to watch the mainstream media go apoplectic around this. Um, they're comparing Millet to, uh, to Trump. Uh, yeah, Trump was, was really a free market guy. There's certain elements of the brashness of the way they speak, although Millet is like 100 times worse in a sense than Trump. But Millet does not come across as, as a pragmatist. Uh, he, Millet does not come across as a, as a, as a, a, a kind of a, um, somebody committed to lying, committed to untruth, committed to making up reality. Millet does not come across as the kind of primacy of consciousness that Trump has. Uh, he, he's outspoken and crazy, and, but he's got ideas. He's got principles. He's got beliefs that are clear, and he will be evaluated based on whether he achieves them. Trump had none of that, and certainly his beliefs that Trump had were not aligned with free markets. Now, the one thing maybe they share in common, although I think Millet has a grasp on it versus Trump that doesn't, and that is hatred for the left. But that's it. It's the only thing they have in common. 